Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is subarray product less than k. So in this question, we're given an integer array nums and an integer k. We have to return the number of contiguous subarrays where the product of all the elements in that subarray is strictly less than k. So by contiguous subarray, you mean that you have continuous elements. So 10 phi 2 is a contiguous subarray, whereas 10 phi 6 is not a subarray, it is a subsequence. But we only have to find the contiguous subarrays. So 10 phi, 10 phi 2, or phi 2, or phi 2 6 are contiguous subarrays. Now let's take a look at this example and see how we can solve this question. So I've taken the first example where we're given the nums array as 10 phi 2 6 and the value of k is equal to 100. And now we have to find the subarrays which are contiguous. So whenever you see contiguous subarrays, the first thing which has to come into your mind is to implement two pointer approach where the left and right pointer will be starting at the beginning and right pointer will keep on moving until the end. So right will keep on moving, right? So you keep calculating the product. What will you multiply with for 10 to be 10 after multiplying it with something? You have to multiply it with one, right? If you multiply it with zero, the product will become zero. So we take a variable product, which is equal to one in the beginning. So to this product, we keep on adding the value where right is pointing to. So right is pointing to 10 so multiply 1 with 10 so product becomes 10. Now we have to compare this product with this k value where k is equal to 100. Check if the product k is greater than 100. No it is not greater so it is one subarray. So before moving right calculate the subarray. So here I am going to write all the subarrays which are going to be part of our answer. So now to calculate the right like I said we have to find the distance between two pointers. So count is equal to right minus left plus 1 right is equal to 0, left is equal to 0, plus 1, so count is equal to 1. So add 1 into our count. So count was initially 0, we have added the value 1. What is that 1 subarray? The subarray value is 10. Now move right. Now right is here. Now calculate the product. The product is 10, to that multiply this value. So 5 will be multiplied and the product is 50 now. So check if 50 is less than k, 50 is less than 100, yes. So now we have to count the subarrays again. What is right at? Right is at 1, left it as 0, plus 1 is equal to 2. So add 2 to the final output. So now the count value is 3. And what are the two subarrays? We are not just counting this single uh, value right. We are also counting this subarray. That is why you have 2, the distance between left and right. So you also add 10, 5. Now move the right pointer again. So right is pointing to 2, multiply that value. Value is now 100. So the product is 100. And we have to compare it with 100. Check if 100 is strictly less than 100. We have to find product of the subarrays which are strictly less than k. 100 is not strictly less than k. So this is not a valid answer. Once this condition fails, you have to move the left pointer. So left will move forward. Left was here, left will move forward. Since you moved left forward, you have to remove this from the product, right? The product is 10. How do you make 100 to 10? You have to divide the value at left. Left was pointing to 10, right? So you divide 100 by 10, that is the element pointing at, now you have 10, that is the expected value. So 5 into 2, this subarray has the value 10, that is the product and product is now having 10. So once you're moving the left pointer, divide that value left was pointing to from the product. Now this product is 10. Now check if this value 10 is less than 100. Yes, 10 is less than 100. So find the difference again. So right is at 2 and left is at 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So add 2 to the value. So total count is 5 now. And what are the two values? It is going to be it is going to be 2 and it is going to be 5 comma 2. So it is going to take this subarray and it is going to take this subarray. Now move right forward. Right is pointing to 6. So multiply the current product with 6. It is 60. Check if the 60 is less than 100, which is k. Yes, it is less than 100. Now we have to find the difference again. So what is the value of right? Right is at 3 and left is at 1. Add plus 1, you get the value 3. So add 3 to the value. So you get the count as 8. And what are the three subarrays? It is equal to 6, it is equal to 2 comma 6 and it is also 5 comma 2 comma 6. So these are the three subarrays 1, 2 and 3. And now we can move right forward and once right reaches the end you can end the iteration and whatever is present inside the final value count will be returned as the output. 8 is the output which is expected here. Now let's implement the same steps in a Java program. Coming to the function given to us, this is the function name and we are given the two parameters. First is an integer array nums and we are also given an integer k. And a return type is an integer representing the count or the number of subarrays we can find with product strictly less than k. So first we are given this k right, that is the target product. If this target product k is less than or equal to 1, we can directly return 0 because we have to find 
subarrays whose product is less is strictly less than k. So if k is equal to 1, we have to find subarray products with the product being less than 1. So there will be no subarrays which have product less than 1. If a element is 0 inside an array, the entire product of that array is going to be 0. So we can do this base check that if k is less than or equal to 1, we can return 0. Now let's create our output variable. I'm going to name it count. It's going to be 0 initially. And now I need a product. So this is going to be multiplied with the array elements. So this has to be 1 because if you multiply any number with 1, that number will be the product. You can't start product with 0 because if you multiply any number with 0, that product will become 0. Now as discussed, we have to implement the two pointer approach. I'm going to take the left pointer which is going to start from 0 and using the for loop, I'm going to use the right pointer and this right pointer will keep on moving to the right until the end. So until right is less than the end of the array, array is nums dot length and right plus plus in every iteration right will keep moving forward to the right. Now let's find the product. So this product keeps on updating when you multiply product with the current element. The current element is at right. So nums of right. Now we have the product. Now we have to check if this product is strictly less than k. If it is greater than or equal to k, we have to move the left pointer. So I'll use a while loop until this product is greater than or equal to k. It means now we have to move our left pointer by moving the left pointer. But before moving our left pointer, we have to remove this uh, left pointer element from this product, right? So we have to decrease product by dividing it with the element at left. So nums of left. So as left moves forward, we are dividing the element at left from product. So this will decrease the product. Now again, it will check this condition because this is a while loop. Once we are out of this while loop, we can calculate our count, how many subarrays we have found. So count. We keep on updating this variable count by the distance between the two pointers. So right minus left plus one. So this will be the count. Now outside this for loop, once right reaches the end, you have your answer inside count. So you will return count outside the for loop. Now let's try to run the code. The test case are being accepted. Let's submit the code and our solution is accepted. So the time complexity of this approach is big O of n, where n is the length of the nums array because we're iterating through the array once. And the space complexity is O of one, constant space because we're not using any extra space to solve this question. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.